Greetings, I'm Rob Ayers, an Environmental Protection Specialist from the Resource Center. The Federal Highway Planning and Environment Linkages Team has been working on technical assistance materials to better describe the ways that Pell can support accelerating project delivery. We'll share a few updates today. Two guest speakers will provide field and resource agency perspectives on PEL implementation. Sarah Wingert, the Federal Highway Transportation Liaison for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and Troy Haluska from the Colorado Department of Transportation. I'll first provide an overview of PEL, including some general considerations we encourage you to do as you get started. I'll discuss planning products, best practices, and one federal decision. Then Sarah and Troy will share their perspectives. PEL is a collaborative transportation decision-making approach that considers environmental, community, and economic goals early in the transportation planning process and uses the information, analysis, and products developed during planning to inform the environmental review process. Ultimately, the goal of PEL is early collaboration to facilitate better planning to inform National Environmental Policy Act reviews to accelerate project delivery. This presentation will show that PEL is flexible and the approach can be adjusted to achieve the outcome that is needed for each situation. Transportation planning identifies the future needs of a community or region to move people, goods, and services and considers at regional level the possible environmental and social impacts or constraints associated with potential transportation solutions. The environmental review process requires agency decision makers to consider the environmental, social, and economic impacts of their proposed actions. PEL provides a collaborative and integrated approach that allows planners and environmental practitioners to integrate these two processes. The transportation planning and environmental review processes use a number of common terms that can vary in meaning depending on context. Various agencies sometimes use the same terms in different ways. To avoid confusion for this presentation, we'll define these terms this way. A corridor or sub-area study is a conceptual level planning study focusing on a particular corridor or region. These studies help determine the following. Transportation needs, general travel corridor, general mode, preliminary screening of alternatives and elimination of unreasonable alternatives, the basic description of the environmental setting, the preliminary identification of environmental impacts, and environmental mitigation. A feasibility study is an analysis and assessment of a project conducted by a transportation agency during planning to determine whether the project is technically or financially feasible. The National Environmental Policy Act Environmental Review Process is a series of activities, analyses, and decisions taken during an environmental review that a federal agency must undertake to meet the requirements of federal law, including the National Environmental Policy Act. NEPA is triggered by a major federal action. For the Federal Aid Highway Program, NEPA typically is required when the action uses federal funds or requires another type of federal approval. The environmental review process often culminates with decisions on detailed project characteristics such as alignment, design, impact avoidance, and minimization and mitigation measures. A planning and environment linkages study is developed with the stated purpose of producing planning analysis and decisions that can be incorporated into subsequent project level environmental reviews. Planning analysis is analysis that assesses system performance using data and information such as population, employment, housing, income, land use, traffic volume, transit ridership, air quality, freight flows, safety, reliability, infrastructure condition, and other information to evaluate how the transportation system serves the public and freight. Tools are often used to forecast future conditions or system performance. Planning analysis also includes input from stakeholders and consultation and outreach with tribal governments, resource agencies, and the public. 
A planning decision is made through a cooperative process by the Metropolitan Planning Organization or State Department of Transportation with input from local elected officials and the general public. Planning analysis are, is used to support informed decision making about future transportation improvements or maintenance. A planning product is a decision, analysis, study, or other documented information resulting from the transportation planning process. A project is any highway, public transportation, or multimodal project that would require approval by the U.S. Department of Transportation. Project development is a comprehensive term to describe the process that applies to a project as it advances through environmental review, preliminary engineering and design, right-of-way, acquisition, construction, maintenance, and operations. Transportation planning is defined as a continuing, cooperative, and comprehensive performance-based multimodal planning process that facilitates the safe and efficient management op operation and development of surface transportation systems that will serve the mobility needs of people and freight. Through our research with state DOTs, we found that PEL may accelerate project delivery because you can get faster decisions with early planning work that has high quality documentation. The benefits of using PEL can include minimizing duplication of effort in planning and NEPA processes, ensuring that analyses or decisions made in the planning process do not conflict with future permitting or environmental requirements by federal, state, or local agencies, stimulating the development of tools to link the planning and environmental processes which can increase the efficiency of project development. There can be several relationship building benefits. Um, among these including building relationships among transportation agencies, resource agencies, regional entities, and the public and local community. Another is enabling non-transportation agencies to engage more effectively in the transportation decision-making process through its focus on building interagency relationships. And finally, identifying stakeholders early in the process and encouraging the public engagement, which can lead to projects that better serve the community. There can be some on-the-ground outcome benefits as well. One is creating a better real-world transportation, environmental, and community outcomes, and another is improving planning products that ultimately resulting in better information, data collection, documentation, tools, communication, and decisions. PEL is an umbrella term encompassing a variety of different activities and strategies to link planning and the environmental review processes. Since coining the term about 12 years ago, Federal Highway and FTA have advanced PEL through regulation, guidance, training, and other communication strategies. PEL is a flexible framework that provides a collaborative and integrated approach that allows planners and environmental practitioners to work together early on in the transportation planning process to ensure that the planning products have utility in the environmental review process. This graphic shows that when planners coordinate with environmental specialists, resource agencies, and others on developing planning, analysis, and decisions together, it can improve the quality of information that can be ready to advance into NEPA. We recognize that a PEL type activity may not necessarily be called PEL. By working together, some positive outcomes include better public involvement, better consideration of the environment, better interagency coordination, and better oversight of the process that doesn't have to be second-guessed. The use of PEL is not required but is encouraged by Federal Highway. This diagram demonstrates the flow of planning products from the planning process into the environmental review process. Planners analyze a lot of information to support decision-making. It can include both data and stakeholder and public input. A PEL approach may support better outcomes. There are many ways to tailor it to meet the unique needs of a given project or region, but the benefits of using PEL are similar and consistent across implementation approaches. PEL can be a valuable tool to avoid duplication of planning analysis and expedite the environmental review process and accelerate the delivery of better projects. 
This diagram represents just some of the number of planning analyses that could lead to planning decisions and strategies that can be integrated into a PEL approach. PEL could be used in different scales such as at the regional level during the transportation planning process or during the development of planning studies where planning products and decisions can be documented for future use in the environmental review process. PEL is a process. PEL can be initiated at the beginning of the planning process when transportation challenges are first identified and considered or it could be integrated into the transportation planning process when developing transportation plans, developing planning products, and or planning studies. Such studies often result in substantive information, analyses, and decisions that can be used throughout the environmental review process under NEFA if the planning products, such as purpose and need, preliminary screening of alternatives, elimination of unreasonable alternatives, if they meet the legal conditions for PEL, such as statutory or regulatory requirements for PEL. PEL authorities allow practitioners to develop a statement of purpose and need, preliminary screening of alternatives, and elimination of unreasonable alternatives from detailed consideration for a project during planning that can be used in the environmental review process as long as it meets PEL authority requirements and NEPA requirements. Because of the important role that these play in any transportation planning effort and in the NEPA process, the PEL project team should consult with Federal Highway or Federal Transit in its development to ensure that the planning products can be used in subsequent environmental review processes. Even though there are specific requirements for each of the PEL authorities, Federal Highway encourages applying several general considerations early on in planning before kicking off a PEL process. General considerations are not necessarily required by a specific statute or regulations. However, Federal Highway encourages these for all PEL approaches because they are good practices. Practitioners should consider early how they intend to use PEL and determine which authority best supports that goal. First is follow the transportation planning process. The content of many planning products can be carried forward into the environmental review for a project. However, to enhance the likelihood of directly adopting or incorporating a planning product into NEPA documentation, it should be generally developed through a statewide non-metropolitan or metropolitan transportation planning process conducted in compliance with federal highway or federal transit planning laws and regulations. The next general consideration is to solicit participation by federal and state resource agencies and Indian tribes. Appropriately engaging the federal and state agencies that regulate resources potentially affected by the proposed transportation project is critical to using PEL successfully. Additional PEL authorities typically require that those agencies be allowed to comment and those comments should be considered and addressed. This is particularly true if a permitting agency will rely on NEPA documentation based on a planning product to inform its permit or approval action. The next general consideration is provide an opportunity for public review and comment. A fundamental component of both the transportation planning process and NEPA is the ability of the public to engage in the decision making process. The next general consideration is use reliable and reasonably current data and reasonable scientifically acceptable methodologies. Because the evaluation of impacts is the foundation of the environmental review process, the methodology used to determine those impacts is critical. Some PEL authorities explicitly address data and methodologies, others do not. If you wish to use planning materials without additional work during NEPA, the planning materials should meet NEPA data and methodology requirements. The next general consideration is to involve the Federal Highway Division and FTA Regional Office as appropriate. As the lead agencies, Federal Highway and Federal Transit should be consulted during the development of planning analyses or planning products intended for use in environmental review. 
Federal Highway and Federal Transit are potentially the most critical stakeholders when undertaking PEL because these agencies play a unique role in ultimately approving planning products for use during the NEPA process. Agencies should, considering the use of a Pell study should consult with the Federal Highway Division Office or FTA Regional Office to discuss the planning products that could be developed for use in subsequent environmental reviews under NEPA pursuant to the PEL authorities discussed previously. Agencies interested in using planning products for PEL should document Federal Highway or Federal Transit involvement in the development of those planning products for potential use and documentation prepared during the environmental review process. Although consultation with Federal Highway and Federal Transit is common across several of the authorities, it's important to note that eliminating alternatives under 23 U.S.C. 139 requires not only that Federal Highway and Federal Transit engage and provide guidance, but that the agencies independently review the, analysis, the alternatives analysis. The final general consideration is prepare appropriate documentation. Ensuring a comprehensive and well-documented record for subsequent project phases by documenting outreach, data collection, analysis, and decision-making is vital for the NEPA process. PEL authorities typically require PEL products to include thorough documentation of the steps taken in the PEL process and the methodologies employed to develop project analysis and decisions. Consultation with Federal Highway and Federal Transit at the conclusion of key milestones, such as initiation of scoping of the planning product, development of the preliminary purpose and need, preliminary identification of alternatives, elimination of unreasonable alternatives, and final planning product is recommended. Practitioners interested in using planning products for PEL should obtain acknowledgement letter from Federal Highway or Federal Transit to document the agency's involvement in the development of the planning product. The PEL authorities do not require a written concurrence from Federal Highway or Federal Transit during planning, but such a letter can serve as document, documentation of the accomplishments of the PEL approach and outline next steps for moving the project forward into the environmental review process. PEL lends itself to a variety of approaches ranging from applying good planning practices to developing PEL products that can be used for decisions such as purpose and need, mode choice, or the range of alternatives. Determining which approach is best for a particular circumstance requires practitioners to consider what outcomes they seek. Practitioners may ask these questions when determining whether to use PEL and which planning product is best suited for their needs. These are self-assessment questions used to determine the type of PEL approach or outcome that best addresses your need. When in the planning process should it be determined whether to use PEL for a future project? PEL can be useful as soon as it becomes apparent that the project is complex. Examples of complexities include if the project is regionally significant, has environmental constraints, incorporates analysis of housing and community development options, is costly or controversial, or has the potential for many alternatives that could be indistinct and confusing. Is the transportation project well defined? An additional planning study may be needed if a project is not clearly defined during planning. Planning studies can establish the scope of the project, purpose and need, or inform the likely level of environmental analysis that may be required of a project. Does mode choice need to be determined? Using planning analyses to determine travel patterns and future needs can support identifying mode choice such as highway, transit, rail, pedestrian, bicycle, or ferry boat. Are the existing conditions and environmental setting well known? Understanding the environmental setting, whether they are natural features, critical habitat, built environment, disadvantaged communities or population, employment and land development projections can inform planning decisions. This may also include discussions to support development of advanced mitigation agreements or programmatic mitigation plans, creation of mitigation banks, or preparation for permits or approvals. 
If planning work is already complete or underway, then you can use these self-assessment questions to determine how you can take advantage of PEL. Can you meet applicable requirements? Are there multiple alternatives to address the transportation problem? PEL authorities allow project studies to screen and eliminate alternatives during planning. The identification of reasonable alternatives can support detailed analysis of alternatives during NEPA. The alternatives to be eliminated from consideration must not be necessary for compliance with the NEPA. Are project stakeholders identified and do they understand and or support the project? The transportation planning and environmental review processes require substantial public engagement to support decision making. Early and continuous outreach and coordination can enable agencies to engage stakeholders and build understanding and support of the project. This can contribute to more collaboration with the community on their needs, increased trust, and reduced controversy. Are resource and regulatory agencies going to be engaged during the planning process? Early resource agency coordination may provide important information on resources and potential impacts that can be used to avoid and or minimize environmental effects. Is the project anticipated to be a major infrastructure project as defined in Executive Order 13807? This may also include discussions to support development of advanced mitigation agreements or programmatic mitigation plans, creation of mitigation banks, or preparation for permits or approvals. This flowchart is a summary of the PEL approaches. Considering the various authorities and direction regarding PEL, a practitioner may be undecided as to how best to approach PEL to maximize its benefits. PEL provides flexibility so that an approach can be designed to achieve a specific purpose or desired outcome. The general considerations are tips for kicking off PEL. The authorities are the statute or regulation that provide direction on an approach and requirements to ensure that the planning work can be adopted and or incorporated by reference or used during NEPA. Practitioners should consider how they intend to use PEL and determine which authority best supports that goal. Knowing the requirements of each authority is critical to successfully leveraging PEL's benefits. Federal Highway encourages the use of PEL under the provisions of both 23 U.S.C. 139 and 23 U.S.C. 168 together to the extent practicable to preserve the option to use the planning products and decisions such as purpose and need and elimination of unreasonable alternatives in the environmental review process. Using the two statutory provisions together may maximize the potential benefits of PEL. However, the statutes allow the use of either approach alone. The definition of planning products is taken from 23 U.S.C. 168. The term planning product means a decision, analysis, study, or other documented information that is the result of an evaluation or decision-making process carried out by a metropolitan planning organization or a state as appropriate during the metropolitan or statewide transportation planning process under section 134 or 135 respectively. This table shows some examples of planning products and how these support the NEPA process. For example, look at the left column where we have planning analysis such as travel demand, traffic forecast, or safety data. These can help to inform the purpose and need. Land use data and growth management can help evaluate alternatives. It ensures that the alternatives that are advanced for evaluation during NEPA are consistent with local goals. In most cases, the planning data and analysis is already available during the traditional transportation planning process. Transportation planning tools are available to help transportation planners use data and information more efficiently to understand the potential impact their decisions have on the transportation network and future projects. Typically, the planning purpose and need or planning goals look at the big picture system linkage, context, community goals, existing environmental data. The purpose and need statement in a NEPA document serves to define the transportation problem and justify why an action may be required and supports the first level of screening for alternatives analysis. 
PEL authorities allow practitioners to develop a statement of purpose and need for a future project during the transportation planning process that can be adopted, used, or incorporated by reference in the environmental review process, as long as it meets PEL authority requirements and the NEPA requirements. States and MPOs can use a purpose and need statement developed during planning if the conditions in PEL statutory are met. These are under 23 U.S.C. 168. Meeting th the conditions in the planning regulations, which are under 23 CFR 450.212 and 450.318, and Appendix A allows states and MPOs to support the further use of planning information in NEPA, but does not provide the certainty of having met the statutory conditions. Because of the important role the purpose and need statement plays in any transportation planning effort and in the NEPA process, the PEL project team should consult with Federal Highway or Federal Transit as appropriate if the intended outcome is developing a purpose and need during planning for use during NEPA. The FAST Act defined the preliminary screening and elimination of unreasonable alternatives is a planning decision. Practitioners can use PEL to identify a range of alternatives and eliminate unreasonable alternatives prior to initiating the NEPA process by identifying and analyzing anticipated environmental impacts and mitigation strategies for project alternatives during the transportation planning process. Although final conclusions for alternatives are made during the NEPA process, PEL can help reduce the range of alternatives by identifying those that are not feasible or do not meet the purpose and need for the project. The planning analysis should be comprehensive and objective, and the rationale for decision making should be well documented. Some of the best practices when evaluating planning alternatives are to be fact-based and focus on corridor vision. Determining criteria for evaluation of alternatives is an important step in the PEL process. It may vary by project, but should reflect the project's purpose and need, transportation benefits, community support and public input, and environmental impacts. It may require several levels of screening or analysis. The FAST Act increased efficiencies with 23 U.S.C. 169 that required transportation agencies to reduce duplication to the maximum extent practicable between the evaluation of alternatives under the planning process and evaluation of alternatives under NEPA or an environmental review carried out under state law. It is important that the alternatives to be eliminated from consideration is not necessary for compliance with NEPA. The programmatic mitigation process supports PEL by allowing the state DOT and MPOs to develop programmatic mitigation plans as part of the transportation planning process or the adoption of a programmatic mitigation plan in the planning process that was developed under another authority. Programmatic mitigation can be done outside of the framework of the transportation planning process. The regulation provides flexibility in the scale and type of resources. It can be developed on a regional, ecosystem, or statewide scale and address the potential environmental impacts of transportation projects. 23 U.S.C. 169F added language that links the development of programmatic mitigation with permits. If a programmatic mitigation plan has been developed under this section, any federal agency responsible for environmental reviews, permits, or approvals for a transportation project shall give substantial weight to the recommendations in a programmatic mitigation plan when carrying out the responsibilities under the National Environmental Policy Act or other federal environmental law. Some of the PEL best practices include Plan before initiating a project. Conducting project planning before initiating NEPA can be more efficient, could lead to avoiding delays, and improve the connection to the system level transportation goals. Think about the schedule and budget. It's important to think about the level of effort that could be necessary early on to achieve meaningful public and stakeholder engagement, gather relevant data, and coordinate with partners and resource agencies. The planning work may inform a future environmental study. 
It's important that planners and environmental staff work together early on in the process and consider the potential use of the planning information in future environmental studies. Leveraging tools such as GIS and other mapping tools to identify environmental resources, environmentally sensitive areas, and potential environmental effects can help to inform planning. Think about the ability of agencies for sharing resources, provide data and early engagement. Ensuring a comprehensive and well-documented record for subsequent project phases. Documenting outreach, data collection, analysis, and decision-making is relevant for the NEPA process. If the planning work is not well-documented, it may need to be revisited during NEPA. The Executive Order 13807 establishes new goals for federal agencies on new environmental impact statements. The Executive Order 13807, titled Establishing Discipline and Accountability in the Environmental Review and Permitting Process for Infrastructure Projects, was issued on August 15, 2017. It requires federal agencies to process environmental reviews and authorization decisions for major infrastructure projects as one federal decision and sets a government goal of reducing to two years the average time for each agency to complete the required environmental reviews and authorization decisions for major infrastructure projects as measured from the date of publication of a notice of intent to prepare an environmental impact statement. On April 9, 2018, the Department of Transportation and several other departments signed a Memorandum of Understanding implementing the one federal decision under Executive Order 13807. The MOU includes concurrence points at the purpose and need, range of alternatives, and preferred alternative. The PEL or PEL-like process provides the best opportunity to reach the two-year goal because it allows agencies to consult, develop, and concur on major elements early in the project, project development process before a notice of intent is even issued. The PEL team has been working on many resources in the Pell website, you can find the most current information. A new PEL training is already available in the National Highway Institute website. This is a view of our PEL website. Some of the PEL resources include the State of the Practice Report, PEL Fact Sheet, and PEL Video. This is a five-minute video that shows an overview of the value of PEL. The video is posted in the PEL website and the Federal Aid Essentials website. We are pleased to announce the new Planning and Environment Linkages course, a two-day instructor-led training course offered by the National Highway Institute. Two versions of the course are offered and can be hosted with or without PEL implementation activities. We're getting many questions about PEL, so today's webinar was an overview, but we're planning to do a second webinar that will discuss in more detail how to develop a purpose and need and evaluation of alternatives during planning. In summary, PEL is flexible. It allows agencies to determine the best approach that may work for them. By incorporating PEL as part of the normal transportation planning and environmental review processes, transportation planners and environmental practitioners can increase the potential for project success by using planning information in the environmental review. For planning entities that currently do not use PEL, a modest shift in approach to incorporate environment, social, and economic considerations early in the planning process can reduce duplicative efforts, encourage relationship building and public engagement, and accelerate project delivery, and as a result, create better products, decisions, and outcomes. Specifically, incorporating PEL principles into a variety of planning-related work can accelerate the environmental review process under NEPA. For more information, please contact either Larry or Maricel.